So let's talk about the stitching method. I've gotten a lot of questions on Facebook on how the actual stitching is done more accurately. And now that the English paper pieces are out for the Farmer's Wife 1920s quilt, I even get more questions. So let's try to break this down. I have adapted this from the DIY Addicts YouTube video. Um, but I have got a little bit of a, a little differences that I do. So basically what we're looking at here is we're doing a, what is called a flat back stitch. And the idea is for your stitches not to show. Normally when you do hexagons, you fold it together, stitch it, and then open it up. What happens is when you take fabric and cut it into pieces, and then try to attach this, this is gonna go on to this piece. So this is an uncut piece. What you have is these seams have two layers of fabric in each, each, each seam. So that thickness of the fabric is going to make this expand. The more seams that you have in your side or in your, in your seam, the more cross seams you have, the larger it's going to be and when you have triangles it makes it worse because these have a tendency to be wider because there's more thickness involved in here so instead of doing that fold flat because when you fold it like this and then stitch it together when you fold it like this you're introducing thread in there as well so this method takes the thread out of this seam here because you don't want it to grow so what we're going to do, I have my, and what I do is I tape my pieces, okay? So I've just got general scotch tape, I put it in place, and when I put it, each one in place, I line up my edges. Doesn't matter, anything else doesn't matter right this second. It'd be nice, This these do match up really well, and they should because they were pre-cut with paper pieces kits. But the important thing at this first thing is this edge right here. So I'm going to take a piece of tape line that I stick stick it on one side line it up and stick it on the other side turn it around and do the same thing on the edge so this is on the edges of the seam I'm about to do and then I have my I have a stiletto that I use and it's got a seam ripper on the other side but I use it for I use the blunt end to just push this down because scotch tape doesn't stick well to fabric so the next thing I do is I will go through here and in this seam is this these folded pieces that are down because I glue base even if you thread base you're gonna have these you don't want to stitch these down because if you stitch these down paper removal is going to be an extra pain in the neck so you want to make sure you don't stitch these down so I take my stiletto because they're glued down and you can see it here these are still glued down and I pop it up just a little bit so I can get under it with my with my needle so I pop up these these don't matter because it's a, you know with the seam line so I'll pop up all of these little tags on my seam and then I will take my thread and I use this dual duty paper piecing thread that's come out from coats it's a really nice strength it's a polyester coated poly thread that stitches like a cotton. It's equivalent to a 60 weight thread and I am really aggressive and I don't have not broken it, broken it yet. So I'm going to take a little bit, I'm going to take some thread and I'm going to stitch it on top of the paper. I'm not going to go through the paper, okay? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to then grab some over here. So when it says flat back, I'm not keeping it flat because you can't get your fingers in there if you try to do that. So I tip it a little sideways and I make sure that my needle doesn't go through this edge. But I try to get it as close to the edge as possible and make sure that they're lined up before I pull this stitch through. So I'm going to pull this through and then I'm going to do it again at the same spot so I have a couple, couple layers of thread sitting here. When I was using Aurifil 50 weight which was fine, but I tendency to I have a tendency to break it, I would do two or three of these. This I'm just going to do one. So then I'm going to work my way down and I'm going to take some, take some of this, and then, so now you've got that little bit. 
on each side on top of the paper and I'm going to stitch this and pull it through make sure it doesn't catch on my little tags and things and you can see now there's another trick and this is how you start sucking up some of this growth because you're always going to have growth and this is the number one question I get is why are they not the same size well it's because you've added two layers of fabric to each separation and you're attaching it to in this case you're attaching it to the same exact thing so it's going to work itself out but as I get to this intersection then things are going to change and when this so I've got this this I have pried up for the other seam and this is going to be poochy so I will make sure that I push this down and get right at that edge you want to make sure that you're that there's accurate because if you're if you especially if you thread base I have I will actually pull it this way and pull this if you can see that because of my shadow here I would pull this tight so I could get to the edge of the paper okay so I'm approaching this intersection and this has a tendency to happen all the time where this loops around and just make sure that you don't leave it like that. I've left it like that and had to go back and take out a seam completely. Alright, so I'm going to push this aside with my thumb and then I'm going to take a stitch right here at this intersection right at the edge of this orange fabric and then I'm going to take a stitch at the white so you're basically locking together this side of a seam, for example. And then I'm going to do it again on the same location. Put my needle in the same holes I just did. Okay. Now, that locks that together. Now here's where the scrunch comes in. What I'm going to do I'll show you on this block here. I've already done this stitch right here, from here to here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a stitch from here to here, across, and I'm going to do two or three of these. So I have two or th about two pieces, one or two pieces of thread stretching this, pulling this together, closing this up. And then I'm going to take another stitch on the other side of this and pull that together. So it makes a little X and it pulls that fabric and it mishes it together as much as possible. So I'm going to lift up this tag and I'm going to get here right on this corner. And you can see that it's quite a big space. So I am going to take a stitch here and then I'm going to take a stitch out of this other white making sure I don't go over this. Okay, So I'm going to take a stitch and pull. And I can I can this is the part where me, me pulling makes a big deal. So I'm gonna take a stitch, I'm gonna take another stitch in the same spot and pull. And you can see you can see kind of if it moves a little bit. And then I'm going to take a stitch. Sorry. Take a stitch on the orange. And now you're going to start to feel some resistance on your needle, which is why nice, new, smooth moving needles are important. Okay. And I use a number 11 applique needle in case someone's asking. And I pull. So what that has essentially done is made this space smaller in here. And then I'm going to go back to this spot and take another stitch on each side like I did the first time when I approached this corner. So I'm going to take some of this, take some of that, and do that, and pull, and I'm going to do that one more time to seal that stitch or cement that stitch in place or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to continue on. Now, in this case, I'm going to take another stitch or two. I don't like to tie off at an intersection, but I'm going to tie off because if I stitch, if I keep stitching, it's going to push it this way and then these are going to be off. 
And so sometimes when you come to the end of your seam, you have a stair step when you should have a smooth line. This, see, this happens to me a lot with this looping on the edges. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple stitches. <laughs> of course, this has to happen every stitch when I video. All right, and I pull this through, make a knot a couple times. All right, so I'm going to tie up. I leave a little bit of a tag, a little bit of a, loop, of a tail, I should say. So I'm going to cut off and I'm let tail's not going to matter, okay? So now I've got it stitched to here and I can take my tape off and because I squished it down so much, I take my stiletto and I stick it under, I don't try to get the fabric, I go in that space where the seam is and I pry it up and I discard it because if you use it again it doesn't stick as well the second time because it's got the lint from the fabric and the grease from your hand so I just keep using. I've gone through a roll of scotch tape so far the dispenser rolls I just keep it with me and I keep a paper clip on it so that I can find the edges really quick so when I do take my tape off I take my paper clip off and I leave this on my finger and then I'll put my finger here cut it off a piece and I'll stick it on the edge of my box or something that I can keep a couple pieces handy and I'll make it to the size I need it because sometimes you only need a little bit and sometimes you need a lot when you've got a longer seam or a longer piece excuse me so it's based on which pieces you're attaching so then I'm gonna make another knot on my thread and I'm gonna start at the other end so it's like I did on the other side I'm gonna take a stitch right here And the knot, I just try to keep the knot because my knots are not pretty. I just kind of cram them underneath the seam allowance fold. As long as they don't seep through, you know, like when I stitch that together, I'll just push that aside. Or what I also try to do is loop it on the next stitch. So as I move down here, I have a tendency to pull this towards me, sorry. So as I pull this stitch closed, I will make sure that this knot is under it and then I can pin it down for me. So now it's just a matter of going, doing the intersections the same way and getting to where I tied off the first time to finish the seam. So the next situation you're gonna have is when you have a triangle point coming up to your seam. And it's the same general theory as the squares with the exception of you don't pull on this one. When you do the little X stitch, you take this, which is this fabric, this is the focus fabric, you take this focus fabric corner to this focus fabric, and this focus fabric corner to this background corner. You do not stitch this because whatever you want to be the sharpest is what you don't want to pull on because if you pull this, you're going to lose the integrity of that sharp edge. So you pull this to here and here to here. So that's what you're going to want to do for this particular situation and then it's just a matter of doing this for each individual square on your stitch when I come to here as you can see it's not quite lined up I didn't fix this on purpose and the reason I didn't fix this is because once I take the papers out this little bit of off this little bit of discrepancy can be worked in to the seam when I attach the row to the other row so once I take, attach this and take the papers out, I won't have a problem because it'll just ease itself in here. So I'm not going to get bent out of shape about a little bit of discrepancy because it, it'll, you know, when, when it relaxes, it'll be better. And when I go to stitch this, I don't treat it any differently. I just pretend that this isn't here and stitch it as, as tight as I can as long as my thread holds out. So that's why I use a big, gigantic strong thread not gigantic but and then I take my papers out with my stiletto and because I glue basted I don't have to take out any threads and if you thread base fine not a problem just take out the threads first and then I'll lift up this lifting this up and because I did a smaller stitch I don't have to really be too concerned about putting my stiletto through a 
a, a space because I don't have very big ones. And so I just pull this out like so. And that's how I do my flat back stitch method.